Boy Hunsgrove was just beside them in this winding, twisting, and very beautiful little downhill run. Will perhaps offer an opportunity for these riders just to hang on out front. And Boato just uh, steps off the gas, and Monique doesn't quite uh, slip through all that quickly. Boato fills the gap there. Looks like uh, Matthias Skelmus, whether he's planning his own attack, just laying off the back here a little bit. Is he feeling the pinch a little bit, or maybe he's just thinking about his own solo run for glory? Who's going to be last man standing? Huddles up onto the tail of uh, Monique. They switch through the S-bend. Those little ruts on the road, I can tell you, are absolutely vicious. You can grab the front wheel of the back. Sudden lack of grip, but also it's, it's quite a violent little jarring series of bumps that you hit. Definitely want to have uh, both hands on the handlebar at the same time as you route through that, especially given the speed of these riders. Well north of 60 kilometers an hour, probably closer to 70 right now. Main peloton looks more benign, but don't believe it. In there, there's all sorts of frantic activity. Everybody trying to maintain position. Move up without hitting the front. We're down to 13 seconds. It's fundamentally uh, four against one at the moment. Fresher legs behind. That breakaway group, they fought manfully to make it in and... Having done it, now the glory is just to see how long they can survive. Suggesting 210 watts. I suspect it's a little bit more than that. Maybe 210 average is it for the day? 7% red zone since the start for Skelmus Jensen. Trek Segafredo man, 21 years of age, He's the youngest rider in the group actually. Third on the stage of uh, Skoda Tour de Luxembourg among that series of uh, impressive results. No, no big wins, apart from the youth classification of Tour of Norway. But a really big result, you feel, is uh, very much in the offing. He's, he's a bit of a keeper, isn't he? He's uh, got his contract through to next year, started as a stagiaire in 2020. like an entente cordiale has been once more achieved among these four riders. Not sure what the Italian equivalent of that is, but suffice it to say, there's a ceasefire and normal service has been resumed. Inside 30 kilometers remaining of the 168 kilometers in total in Gran Piemonte 2021, heading out of Rocca Canavesi to Borgo Sessia today. Pretty much... Uh, a blast from west to east of, re of the region. Heading northeast throughout the day. Um, beautiful sun dappled autumn roads in Piedmont. The back of the peloton looks a little more benign. Difficult to influence affairs from here, but uh, well, Davide Orico is the man punching tickets at the back. The Zabu man will hope that uh, Jakob Moreczko is on good sprinting form today. And he puts Marco Proporte into the uh, the break earlier on. And wonders what strength they have for the fight at the back end. But Moreczko is certainly an option for them. Down to single figures, their advantage. And they massed hordes of the main peloton. Set to make the junction quite quickly. Unless something extraordinary happens, we're going to get any sort of a 
throttling back amongst the main peloton behind. Ricardo Stacchiotti, of course, another option for the Vinny Sabu squad. We'll keep an eye on him, see which uh, which rider they sprint with. Moreczko, the diminutive rider, the uh, Italian of Polish heritage. Now, no prizes for being last man standing. I'm not aware of any um, aggressive rider competition. Maybe there's some sort of a uh, preems being awarded along the way. But uh, might as well like to, uh, in fairness, given that they're not on a circuit. The kind of thing is really safe for the criteriums and kermesses that are banned in Northern Europe, particularly in this part of, of Europe, as uh, Boato anxiously looks over his shoulder, wonders where the Astana squad are. Alexander Bordeaux, second on a stage of uh, Dauphiné earlier on this year to Sonny Colbrelli. So Alexander Boru certainly presents a significant threat for the Astana Premier Tech squad. Boru's done his job for them, so the uh, Blue Hordes will be making their way up, and it looks to me as if it signals an opportunity for a little bit of attacking as several of the squads not involved in the chase just want to place riders close to the head of affairs or maybe even think about getting off the front. So it's all changed in the front of the main peloton, but 27 kilometers remaining. The main peloton still large in number. How much will that be thinned down before they get to the finish line? A lot of riders still able to make a contribution. Boato goes on the attack again. He really is the living embodiment of irrepressible. He just loves to race his bike. He loves the vibe, and you just see it. And they understand it from the body language that he presents. Every time he's out there, he's always looking around, always trying to consider the options, and always given half a chance going on the attack. And if nothing else, he will be last man standing of this breakaway group of initially five riders. Main peloton after that little flurry of uh, excitement is just trying to piece itself together and back up into color formation. The Bahrain Victoria squad moving up on the right-hand side of your picture. Wado's uh, little attack served and nothing else to ensure that he was in prime position to grab a bottle. So he might be able to assist a little bit. The Astana squad just trying to stay a little bit further back in the order and time their run to the front. Davide Martinelli just uh, sitting at the back of their lineup. Darren Bora, but why not Martinelli? Had a couple of good results this year. He's on home roads. So fellow professionals will call out the hazards to others as the pace just uh, throttles back ever so slightly and that's going to encourage the odd little solo bid for glory from some of the lesser lights and it looks uh, to me as if it's the Uskaltel squad. The rally cycling team of course have uh, very very similar colours. Uskaltel from the Basque region. We have a couple of uh, decent sprinters in their lineup. Angulo. San Pedro, Antonio Angulo San Pedro of the Escaltel Escadi squad is a very useful, very useful sprinter. Is this Juan Boo again? He was in the break yesterday. He's got plenty of, uh, I'm not so sure it is, might be Juaristi. Yeah, indeed, uh, Juaristi. Tomin Juaristi Arieta. From the Escaltel Uscadi squad, the Spanish rider. Enjoying his visits to Northern Europe and a rare appearance of some traffic. And uh, almost ironically, it's an ambulance, isn't it, on the, on the course. And these races are uh, brilliantly well run, I have to say. So the phalanx of uh, motorcycles peppered across the countryside, managing this uh, rolling road closure.
going to be no issue for this man. He's Radisti, clear of the field, and the latest man to try his luck. And that's no glory, why not? And plenty of room for the main peloton to make their way through, and a source of great relief, I suspect, for that vehicle, who somehow managed to make an appearance out on the course. Perhaps there's a, an emergency that needs to be attended to. Four-second margin, narrow lead through this long avenue. And the peloton encouraged to make way for that rescue vehicle. That's, uh, Not ideal, but nice bit of race management there. There haven't been too many Spanish wins in the history of this bike race. By my calculation, just one ever. Well, no, two. Uh, first uh, victory for Spain coming in 1982. Fastino Ruperes, remember him, uh, taking the win. And Danny Moreno back in 2011, the uh, second and most recent uh, victor of this event for Spain. So it would be a remarkable occurrence and a remarkable third appearance of a Spaniard on the road of honour of the Gran Piemonte, where Suaristi to hold off the main peloton behind, which is, I think you agree, and I hope it's not being disrespectful, seems very unlikely indeed at this moment, but it's a good show of strength. It's a useful hit out. The Zuskaltel squad will be uh, no doubt impressed with the effort that he's making. And Juaristi putting his uh, name in lights, albeit briefly. On to the head of affairs. On to the front of the peloton, on to the cameras. That's the real thing, isn't it? 26-year-old. Second overall in the... the um, Tour of uh, Portugal, Volta, Portugal de Futuro, Futuro, the Futures Under 23 event. Back coming a couple of years ago now, 2017. And he's been with this team since it uh, developed from continental status in 2019 up to become a pro team, Division 2 squad in 2020. He's contracted through uh, next season as well. So a developing rider. A little bit more road furniture to be encountered, managed, dealt with uh, by the riders in the main peloton and uh, a few cyclocross skills in evidence. Pascal tells on the front and indeed on the back. Juaristi is overhauled by the main peloton. Little footnote in the history of cycling, but why not? Juaristi given his opportunity to go for glory. Gattinara. By the Hotel Barone. For a bit of dinner. It was, it was absolutely marvellous. I think it was as much the welcome, really, and the, uh, the atmosphere around it that as the food itself, which is pretty good. Nebbiolo is the local grape, by the way, and the uh, red wine didn't exactly flow last night, but it was uh, a very pleasant accompaniment to the dinner. Guado, after his great efforts, has uh, pulled the plug here, and he'll just cruise in. I suspect we'll see him on duty on Saturday. Has he got a mechanical issue? May well indeed actually have a mechanical issue, or he could have a physical issue around cramp. But he has uh, given a good account of himself today, so Manuel Eduardo is detached and dispatched. Suaristi still ploughing on, uh, literally millimetres off the front of the peloton, but the Bahrain Victoria squad now taking command on the right-hand side of your picture in those red jerseys with the blue flashes. On the left-hand side, the navy blue with the red colours of Team Ineos Grenadiers. Bora up the middle from that walls. And from the uh, inner around Manchester region, he's a Lancashire rider. And uh, took a breakthrough success in the Tour of Norway recently. Whether that is the springboard to a new level. This this indeed would be a new level, I think, where he... Oh, that is a... Oh, riders down! And it's one of the Umbo Visma riders that hits the deck, and it seemed almost inevitable, really. That was a sketchy one. They've been through this one already, and we did uh, say it first time round that that was an awkward one as the Jumbo Visma rider just 
hits the deck and uh, uh, Olaf Koy, I think he's one of their sprinters, isn't he? Olaf Koy is on flying form of late. He's a young Dutch uh, well, sensation, really. Two stage victories in the Crow race recently. Third in the under-23 World Road Race Championship. So let's get a look at this again, just to see. He just washes out, really. Front end gets away from him, trying to carry too much speed. I think he decided late on that he was going to try and go to the left of that, uh, of that bit of... Was it a bump in the road, or was it just he committed to the left of, the, of that traffic island? Either way, front end washed out, no grip there. Frightening, but he's still back in there, and he's got plenty of time to get back up there. The question is, has he been damaged by that physically, mentally, or otherwise? And Olaf Koy is... is a really fabulous young talent. More road furniture to be negotiated, more volunteers. And it's a brave job, I think, to stand in front of a peloton charging along at speeds and approaching uh, 60 kilometers an hour. Average speed of the day up over 46 kilometers per hour. It's been a tasty one. Hasn't been flat. I mean, this is definitely one for the sprinters today, but don't delude yourself that this is a flat route. There have been some grippy little climbs that would test and challenge any amateur rider, I can assure you. These uh, pro riders seem to get up and over them before they've really noticed them. That's the way it appears when you're watching it. I can assure you it's different for the riders. Um, well, we're checking out the uh, official website for this event, by the way. There are links to the live uh, rider data provided by the Velon organization. Uh, always great to get the insights and get a sense of just what's, uh, what's going on and what sort of physical inputs into the pedals are required by the riders to maintain position in the peloton. Inside 20 to go. Inside 18, indeed, to go in this... Uh, Fast run edition of Gran Piemonte. We're heading down towards Borga Sessia. And Richie Port has still has the wherewithal to grab a bottle, get the drinks in, and still maintain a pace on the front that controls the uh, situation for Ethan Hayter. So to Sonny Colbrelli. Well, will the nerves be jangling or will he be enjoying this? thinking now about the battles to come the battle for position into the finale some of the other sprinters to uh, to conjure with today well we've mentioned of course uh, uh, Martinelli and Adam Burrow as the options maybe for the Astana squad Minali and Germay for uh, for Intermarchi Wanti Gobert Marchiori, perhaps young uh, Italian rider, is emerging for the Androni Giacatti Sidermax squad. Jonathan Restrepo is quite a useful sprinter, maybe the uh, Colombian rider. He can do a little bit of everything, but uh, second on a stage of Sitamana. Copy about to the earlier on this year. cycling squad trying to move their riders up on the left-hand side those uh, orange jerseys with the white chevrons on their back have a couple of sprint options as well they've got Arvid de Klein part of the Dutch uh, sprint conveyor belt which also includes this man Olaf Koy recovering from his little unscheduled tumble and looking pretty scuffed on that left shoulder these jerseys pretty much disintegrate within side of the ground don't they he's made it back in he's got 16 kilometers to recover no sign of any well just there's a rider on the back of the group a couple of them indeed to just tow him back into contention it's probably makes more sense for them to stay in there and uh, ensure that coy makes it back up with the assistance of the cars and then when he gets to the uh, the group then that's good uh, race management i think by the team yumbo visma squad because we're very much on here Port still trundling along at a searing pace. O'Brelli will be satisfied with the current state of affairs. The Movistar squad latching on to the Bahrain Victoria squad. Movistar with Gonzalo Sorano, by the way. They, he's uh, got a stage win in Vuelta Andalusia earlier on this year against some very impressive. A sprint company so 
Watch out to see whether it's uh, Serrano that goes for glory. KJ Rojas has in the past been pretty useful in the sprints, but I suspect Serrano is more likely to have the, uh, the interest and indeed the interests of his team into Marche Wanty Gobert trying to pick up on the lead out train of the uh, Bahrain Victoria squad. He's on flying form, is uh, Sonny Colbrell. He's won this event in the past, gets up over the climbs, and then arrives at the finish line. He's one of the fastest riders of his generation, but maybe one wonders whether the course has indeed actually been hard enough today. Has he made it as challenging as it needs to be? It's like Bacalans close to the front of the uh, Intermarche Wanty Gobert squad. Finale gravitating towards the back of their lineup. Look at Filippo Ganna just over towards the, uh, the right hand side of the bunch or the left hand side of the picture. I only just scrolled out of shot, but he's well to the fore in the Ineos Grenadiers. It is quite the drag race, isn't it? Looks like Richie Port has done his job and he'll just nestle back into the main peloton. The Stana squad on the right hand side of the picture have picked up on the lead at train of the Ineos Grenadiers squad. And is that still... Oh, no, it's uh, Ben Swift, of course, the British national road race champion that's towards the back of their, of their lineup. It looked like Swift was locking it out for Ethan Hayter, or else they're going to sprint for Swift. Well, who knows? It would be a surprise if Hayter wasn't the preferred option, and that would be the normal state of affairs with that uh, Ineos Grenadiers would put a rider behind their sprinter just to make it easier to control the situation and not have too many riders from the, from other squads trying to muscle in and cause all sorts of confusion trying to get involved in their lead out train. Arkea Samsic now starting to make their presence felt. Very prominent yesterday in Milano Torino with Nairo Quintana and he needless to say he's not involved today but they've got uh, they've got the Belgian fast man Amori Capio among their number. We want to make our presence felt on the front. The riders in the red. French registered squad. And the uh, nice bit of uh, contrast and comparison between Mark Perdun and Sonny Calbrelli. Meanwhile, we watch with interest to see what it is that the Team Yombo Visma squad have got planned. Tobias Foss just picking up second in line and onto the front of the peloton. Norwegian star. Norwegian national road race champion has been escorted through to the front, but uh, it would be a surprise were he to be the man they were looking at. They get Olaf Coy back up and in there. Bardiani CSF, one or two of their jerseys just assembling towards the left hand side of the road. Foss gets on the blower. As if to say, we're here now. We've made it. Matthew Trentin just uh, still continuing to ride around and try and pick up. Uh, one wonders how much assistance he's got from his team at the moment. Doesn't seem to be too many riders out there. And I wonder uh, just where Max Rukesi is. But uh, Matteo Trentin just for the UAT Emirates squad. Number of Isma's lineup. Tobias Foss, as we've seen, has hit the front. Olaf Koy is somewhere down towards the back at the moment. They're going to try and time this one. They've got uh, just under 12 kilometers to make their way through to the head of affairs. Plenty of time. Roads, well, they're not, they're not uh, wide open boulevards. They're not too narrow either. So you would imagine they'll still have time to do it. And the Yumbo Visma squad just starting to make their push to go up and try and uh, latch on to their two riders on the front just doing the doing the donkey work well not quite on the front at the moment because Bahrain victorious have just hit the front they've got control question is have they got the legs to stay there for any length of time Dylan Toombs among their number the Belgian uh, star what a strong Lineup they've got Dylan Toons, uh, Pernstein have seen doing great work. Pardoon, we got great uh, comparison of the sort of uh, effort he was making compared to Sonny Colbrelli. Doman Novak is the uh, Slovenian rider in with them as well, and Santiago Butrago, the Colombian, completes the Bahrain victorious lineup today. 
approaching the 10 kilometers to go, Mark. Approaching the moment of where we'll head across and head towards the finale in Borga Sessia today. They've done the loop, takes them now towards the finish line. They haven't seen the finish yet. UAE team Emirates start, have got something uh, of a level of control now. So Mario Trenton has been flying solo early on. Now has a couple of riders to assist towards the head of affairs. And now the drag race continues and if anything intensifies. Right turn at the roundabout serves as an opportunity to stretch the peloton thin. Across the bridge, they'll make a left and then they'll head on the other side of the river down towards the finish in Borgesessia today. Nestling within the Monte Fenera Nature Park. Lots of caves along the western slopes of the mountain, actually, that are uh, popular. Philippe Ogana about to take his bow. His moment yet to come. There's the bridge. And I mentioned, look at that, the space across. I mean, nothing, and no vehicle has gone across the bridge as quick as this peloton of late. And this is the moment where it all gets interesting, isn't it? Inside 10 kilometers to go now in the finale of Gran Piemonte 2020. 168 kilometers in total. We're approaching the moment where they hit the 100 mile mark, and it's all pretty much color combination. They've got riders to the fore, have Team Yumbo Visma. They've got their sprinter into prime position. Olaf Koy, after his little unscheduled step off the bike at pace a little while ago. Well, it's about eight kilometers ago indeed he's managed to get himself back into the fray and back up onto the front but they've got muscled out just uh, a couple of moments ago by the astana squad as they have designs on glory today so too the movistar team with a couple of options serrano perhaps their best option today the cofidis team well red and white colors lurking close to the front is elia viviani as he stays as close to the front as he possibly can. And Fabio Sabatini, his faithful domestic, Gregario indeed, has uh, assisted him. Simone Consoni among their uh, number as well, so he's put the band back together. He's got the right riders. He's got his uh, preferred option in terms of lead out. Astana in control at the head of affairs. This Fellini looks like on the on the front. And he's got a good engine on him. He's for a galloper in his time himself. Down towards the back of the group, Nathan Brown in the rally cycling colours. Arvid Klein, I mentioned, he's a very useful sprinter, but so too is Colin Joyce, and both of those riders are in good form of late, so it'll be interesting to see exactly what the rally cycling team, it'll be all about communication, really, whether they, both riders will try and infiltrate lead-out trains and get up there in amongst the World Tour squads to just challenge for a decent top ten, or maybe even the victory today, and whether they'll try and organise something for one particular rider. Leolo Komete, as if we didn't have enough blue jerseys on the front, almost identical in... Uh, in colour to the Movistar squad, the Division 2 pro team level squad. Well, they have certainly punched above their weight. Worth remembering and mentioning indeed, Manuel Belletti. He's retiring today, the 35-year-old Italian. He is a fine sprinter and, well, could it be a final roll of the dice? They've got Vincenzo Albanese, who's second on a stage of uh, Giro Sicilia lately. But Belletti was there thereabouts as well. And he's at the back of their lineup. 
and maintaining position. I think they could well be sprinting for Belletti today. Maybe they'll give both of their sprinters a free roll, but they'll divert most of their attention and their resources to Manuel Belletti. Final time of asking. He's heading towards retirement. And could he make it the final and perfect send-off? Well, it would not be something that the uh, Ineos Grenadier squad are interested in facilitating today because they've got a man for the victory. And that, uh, you suspect, is uh, Ethan Hayter, who's been on absolutely flying form since his heroics at the Olympics, uh, Olympic silver medal in the Madison. And since then, he's won a string of successes, two stages in the overall in Tour of Norway, also came up with stage success in his home tour, Tour of Britain, within the last couple of weeks. And it's just been uh, a year where he's stepped up and gone to a new level. World Tour success yet to happen, but this, I think, would be the next stage. This effectively a World Tour race, really, in, in many ways. It's not officially a World Tour race, but the sort of standards that we're seeing from these riders and the sort of rider that's come, I think, suggests that it is a, a pretty decent level, to say the least. Just picked out Filippo Fiorelli, who was kind of freelancing in the middle of the bunch, trying to pick out the right stage, number 31 there. But this is... Oh, that's a frantic moment, isn't it? And that could have gone either way, but it just shows you the ability of these riders. Number 53 is Simone Consoni. He's trying to maintain a position on the wheel of Fabio Sabatini. Both those riders in the service of Elia Viviani, the former Italian and European champion. It's the Movistar squad that own the front at the moment. They've got the position, but can they hang on to it for another five kilometers? Easier said than done, I can assure you. 5K to go in Grand Piemonte. We're winding up for the big sprint to the finish. Tim Ineos Grenadiers just uh, edging ahead in the half-wheeling competition. sitting second in line, ready to do his thing. It's uh, Vinny Zabu who have hit the front as well. They've managed to just take over on the right-hand side of your picture from the Movistar squad. Decent show of power and strength. Uh, this by Ferri, I think it's Gregorio Ferri, and now we've got a man who's got power in abundance. Power to spare. Strongest man in this kind of... Uh, this kind of business, and he, he, Ghana will hope that he, he can hit the front just a little bit later than all that. He doesn't want to arrive on the front with 3K to go. It would be ideal if it was two or even one kilometre to go. And that uh, little ridge up the centre will have got everyone's attention. Four kilometres remaining now, and uh, trying to put the bunch back together again after that. Well, it's advantage, Team Ineos Grenadiers, and Movistar squad, I think, will be satisfied that they contained uh, that and managed to maintain control. Cataldo on the front for them. Well, it's uh, north of 500 watts here. Little spikes of four and 500 watts to maintain position. Then you get off the pedals back on. It's all those little micro efforts. You're seeing them on screen. It's not so much when the, uh, when the power goes away that it's easy. It's when the, the power goes back on. It's having to do it again and again and again. The final finishing sprint the, is this, but a flourish at the end of all those it's, you know, numerous efforts. Orico, whoa, what's that all about? Uh, I think he must have punctured. He's sliding around the road. Orico, who spent uh, much of the day on the back of the peloton, trying to recover in the time-honoured fashion. Well, three kilometres remaining now, and Arkea Samsic have uh, hit the front. Where is Ghana? He's going to time his run uh, onto the front just to keep it as late as possible. Lucas Plapp, the Australian rider, is doing the legwork for the Ineos Grenadiers squad. It's uh, Bahrain victorious now once more in control. UAE team Emirates also infiltrating that lead out to try and set something up for Matteo Trentin and the gallopers themselves are paying attention not just to their lead out men but also the other sprinters around them. Nobody wants to time it too too early and it looks to me as if Filippo Gana is going to get this wish. He's going to uh, launch on the front probably inside two kilometers remaining. Colbrelli looking to move up and time it. So too is Nizzolo who's hit the front a little bit earlier and is in front of all his lead out train. Just uh, momentarily, have they decided to change the plan today? A 
Jean Ponard sits the front for the Quebec Next Tash squad. He's got big time trial watts to bring to the party. Something to compare with Filippo Ganna, who's waiting to launch on the left hand side of your picture. The Yumbo Visma squad, those yellow and black jerseys, also in control at the front and it looks like Hessman their young German rider who made a name for himself yesterday now we've got the rally cycling team starting to move up on the left hand side in those orange jerseys with the white chevrons squeezing through and on that left hander an opportunity once more to make hay while the sun shines and move up a little bit other teams uh, being badly affected by it here comes Ghana 1500 meters remaining sits on the wheel of Campanar a man he's vanquished to win the world time trial champion championship but now they're in the service of others Colbrelli's assembled on the left hand side of your picture he's trying to pick up off the lead out train of Filippo Ghana and Ghana doesn't make it to the front remarkable stuff as he hasn't got the strength for that one and that's quite a pinch point and how did the riders stay up there riders left and right and everyone is scattered to the fore wins and that served to stretch out the peloton inside and under the kite and a thousand meters remaining it's uh, the Yumbo Visma squad have got controlled it's Ben Swift also in prime position here for Ethan Hayter where is Hayter that's the question as it's looking good at the moment for Olaf Coy of the Yumbo Visma squad and next up well, the uh, teams are trying to get themselves and assemble and get back into position. Not going to be the day for Elia Viviani. Ben Swift has put himself into the uh, lead-out train. Olaf Poy looks good here as well for the Yumbo Visma team. Everyone else trying to scramble back into position. Matteo Trentin's going to launch early. We're inside the final 300 metres of the... Uh, and it's a blanket finish. Go to the line. Matt Walls in perfect position. Is Walls going to get it? Or is he going to be ambushed on the line? The Bora Hansgrohe squad, I think, have got the win. We wait for full confirmation of that. What about that for a conclusion? Gran Piemonte has delivered the expected searingly, extraordinarily fast finish and that uh, went the way of the Bora Hansko squad well it was all a bit of a frantic recovery wasn't it but Matt Walls got up for the Bora Hansko squad has taken another extraordinary and I think uh, career defining step up here waiting for full confirmation but it looks like Matt Walls of uh, Lancashire has got the glory today and among the riders first up to congratulate him his Madison partner from the Olympic Games just a few short months ago, Ethan Hader, one of the pre-event favourites, is first up to congratulate his teammate on the track. But it's the Bora Hansgrohe, a team that can celebrate. They've got to run to the uh, podium here, and that's a big, big win for Matt Walls. Well, I'll tell you what, that uh, little left-hander under the kite caused all sorts of consternation, didn't it? It got very physical. This little squeeze here, how did they all stay upright? There were riders... Well, I think greatly inconvenience is probably the easiest thing you can say, and that, uh, that was a very, very intense moment, wasn't it? And they managed just about to stay upright, but many riders' ambitions, well, were ended in that, that moment. Perfect uh, positioning by Matt Walls to put himself just where he needed to be, and the Team Yumbo Visma squad, they owned it. But converting and timing, it's not that easy at that point. And this is the moment that uh, I think it was Trenton launching here, and Matt Walls just picking up on his wheel, straight up and over him. Coy was late to the party. Actually, I think Trenton was coming off the lead out. It's Solo just uh, not quite able to get up, and it's frustration, I think, for the Italian former. A national road race champion, former European champion as well. And it's Solo just up for second on the day, but he's not quite able to get that extra half bike length that he needed to do to take the glory. Walls times his run to perfection. He's got the legs to be there. He's got the legs to convert as well. Another frustrating second place. Not the first in his uh, career, is it, for uh, Giacomo Nizzolo. Olaf Koy, after crashing with 16 kilometers to go, gets up for a top three finish. Yeah, I think he'll be you know, satisfied on some level with that. But it's uh, all smiles from Matt Walls.
there's confirmation of the finishing order with Matt Walls getting the win for the Bora Hansgrohe squad ahead of Giacomo Nizzolo, Olaf Goy, Matteo Trentin, uh, Vinium Germe getting up for a great fifth place finish ahead of uh, Jakob Morecco, Ricardo Minale, Arvid Decline, Amori Capio, and Stefano Aldani. Tenth across the line for the Lotus Sidal squad. A string of Italian flags in amongst that number. It's uh, Britain that get the glory. the return to home roads and victory that Sonny Colbrelli would have hoped for, nonetheless. He's had a pretty good uh, end to the season, as indeed has Matt Walls after that breakthrough success in the Tour of Norway. I had a chat with him actually just after it and he was very even-tempered about what was a really, really big day for him, I think, as, uh, as a pro rider. And now, another little step up in level. And I think it's uh, fair to say that it's likely that we're likely to be seeing indeed the this name in lights in World Tour races uh, before very long. They've got this renewed responsibility in Tom Tumbe with Sam Bennett coming back into the fold next year. Irish rider returning to Bora Hansbro. Pascal Ackerman is heading out and off to Pastures New. What a superb performance by Biniam Germay in the precise abilities of this uh, young rider from Eritrea. Yet to be fully established, but he's very, very quick. And also, I think, offers something in the hillier races as well. We'll see how that uh, how indeed his career develops in years to come. He fairly threw it at the line, didn't he, Matt Walls? Lifted the front wheel. Not for the first time in his career, Giacomo Nizzolo is uh, left banging the bars. 